Working at Gymshark is all, all consuming and coming into this new role as CEO for the last six months, it has been even more so. So much of what I do is confidential and they're things that I'm just not able to share with you in the moment. So today, we wanted to record a little bit more lighthearted content and just talk about five things about me that you guys won't know. These pair didn't believe me about this, but I didn't eat any vegetables until my mid twenties. Now, I don't know if that's like a weird thing or not, but Robin was the actually, actually the person that got me into eating vegetables. And so growing up, I had a massively, massively limited diet, really, really limited. I would only eat certain things. I'm not sure exactly why. I don't know if that's just the way I am. I don't know if it's because I was only exposed to certain foods. I don't know if it's because my parents probably could have pushed me harder on eating certain things. I don't know if it's a sort of semi autistic trait. I'm not sure, but so I think when we first met, Robin thought that was fairly juvenile of me. And and started to expand my, my food and, and vegetables was probably the first thing. She actually, I feel like she sort of gave with one hand and took with the other in terms of my health, right? Because she introduced me to vegetables, but also introduced me to dessert. Um, I'd never really had dessert previous to that. So we met when I was 23. It probably took about a year or so for her to convince me. So yeah, 24, 25 was when I first started eating vegetables properly. We didn't really talk too much about the wedding, did we? But we got married in the Cotswolds in a place called Cornwell Manor. Uh, in a small church and it was it was absolutely lovely so we had a three-day wedding the first day basically everyone got there it was only a small wedding i think it was 48 or 50 people give or take and then we ha had the actual ceremony a small in a small church that was on site the following day we had these sort of outside sort of drinks and food and snacks and we had a few more people attend as well yeah but it was stunning it was it was genuinely one of the best days of my life or the best three days of my life it was the only time i probably i've, I've ever had and may ever will have where I had all of my friends and Robin's friends and family all in one place under one roof, I guess just having a great time together. And to do that particularly last year when COVID and everything that had been happening for the last few years and we just hadn't been able to see so many of our friends and family, it was, it was really special. So number three, this is actually, this was something that definitely, definitely pushed me to my absolute limit, right? And so a few years ago, we had a really, really difficult time. And this is where like, there was a lot of change going on in the business. And I felt there was definitely a lot of pressure on myself. And essentially what had happened, we'd done a, an event in Birmingham, we'd done the Body Power Expo. A lot of the, the payments that we took were on card, but a lot of the payments that we took back then were also in cash too. And what would happen is you'd, you'd have a, a secure pickup from the event and they would carry the cash from the safe at the event. And they would then take it back to what was then our old office. And there would be a safe in the old office and secure location, it would all be sort of covered by motion detectors and all this sort of stuff. I got back from Body Power, and I think people must have been watching my social media or something, but basically went home, dropped my stuff off, and I had to go out. I think, I can't remember what it was. I think we were actually filming in, in the city center. Got back, and basically the house had been completely ransacked. So my house had been completely robbed. I'd been watching a house, I'd imagine. They took everything, all my stuff, all my laptops, all my electronics, like, like I said, every, everything that wasn't bolted down essentially was 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 gone right um, and on top of all the stress that i had anyway that was that was the last thing i needed stayed there that night the next day went into the office and i then found out that also the office had been robbed and going back to that secure collection that's picked up from the expo and then moved to the office don't ask me how but they had literally tunneled through the hedgerow which is a you know it's a thick hedgerow it's probably the best part of 20 plus feet worth of hedgerow of dense dense hedges they'd literally cut all the way through in a, in a perfect sort of um avenue to get through there climbed up, cut the glass out, somehow avoided the motion detectors, and then ripped, literally ripped, I don't know how, I'm assuming that there was something attached to a vehicle of some sort, ripped the safe out the wall, uh, and essentially nicked the safe from Gymshark. So within a 24, well, 48 hour period, both my house had been ransacked and the office had been ransacked. Right, I, I, I don't believe that someone who hadn't essentially had internal knowledge of some sort or had entered either my property or the office would be able to do this or they, they certainly would need information right yeah that listen that proper knocked me and that was a, that's going back a while now i was probably i think i was in my early 20s probably 22 and there was just so much change that was going on uh, and this happened and i've never spoken about that publicly and even to be honest amongst people at gymshark the vast vast majority of people wouldn't know what, that that happened because not only was there so much change going on anyway both in the business but in my life but then to have those two things as well was just a level of stress that 
I listen, I just didn't expect and it was so, so, so tough for me to sort of get through that and manage through that and, and process it and deal with it. But definitely, definitely a tough moment in the Gymshark story that I've uh, I've never spoken about previously. But number four, fourth thing that you don't know about me. This isn't something you probably don't know about me as such, but I talk a little bit about like learning from others and I'm conscious of the fact that I've probably never directly spoken about a lot of the people that I learn from other than the sort of the obvious people like I've referenced. People like Gary V and Jordan Peterson and so on. But in terms of people that I well, not only love to learn from but like I genuinely call a good friend of mine would be a guy called Ajaz Ahmed and Ajaz started a company called AKQA. AKQA is the world's biggest digital agency and he's incredibly incredibly intelligent and he's so so switched on and a, an incredibly genuine brilliant open honest helpful loving just a great human being right. So I learned a lot from him and we actually met we only met probably about 18 months ago Ajaz had previously worked with General Atlantic and at the time we were trying to work out whether or not General Atlantic were the right partner for us. So I spoke to him like as a, as a point of reference and we've just kept in touch ever since. So I've learned so much from him and he's helped me greatly and continues to do so. And he's just a, an all round great human being. And the company AKQA also do really, really cool things as well. So if you've not heard of AKQA, if you've not checked them out before, then by all means do so. They're an incredible company. He's an incredible guy. So yeah, that's someone, not something you don't know about me maybe, but someone that I've not talked about on this channel before. Because I think I have talked talked about it before, but as a kid I was proper like addicted to World of Warcraft and gaming. Like loved World of Warcraft, Call of Duty, Gears of War, things like that. But particularly World of Warcraft. And I actually think, I think I learned as much if not more from World of Warcraft than I did in school like i genuinely genuinely believe that and that was about working with others about teams and also the other thing by the way you'd be working with people from all over the world from different countries and i'd never really been exposed to that previously so learned so much there the auction house the economies that exist in the game you can learn so much through gaming so i i hope parents don't look at their kids as just sort of like mindlessly gaming because you can learn so 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 much through gaming and i know i certainly did particularly through world of warcraft go on do a quick fire youtube question and answer so we love to watch The American Office. Like we just watch that on repeat and we just run through it all the while. Robin loves to watch that. To be honest, we don't watch massive amounts of telly. It's more YouTube. So now for me, it's definitely like podcasts. So Joe Rogan podcast, True Geordie, Chris Williamson, Jordan Peterson, Diary of a CEO, yeah, Steve, a lot of what Steven does as well. A lot of podcasts, to be honest. Uh, Notion. Note taking, pretty much exclusively use Notion, like pretty much run my entire life off Notion personally and professionally. And even before I would use, I think I've done videos on this before, I would use different apps for things to do. So I'd use things for my to-dos. Even now, I've shifted all that into Notion with the help of Zoe and I pretty much exclusively work through Notion now. This is weird, this is actually weird. I don't like heights and I'm not fussed about like planes and all that sort of stuff. It's just certain heights really like rock me right. Anyone that's local to here will know the ball ring right. And in the ball ring you got Selfridges and Selfridges is like it's a big department store. In the middle you can see all the way down but the sides they're like they're not straight like this they sort of lean in. Really creeps me out like I don't like being too close to the edge of the, um, the thing in um, Selfridges. So yeah I don't like heights. That's my that's a proper like specific <laughs> fear, isn't it? Your biggest fear is self-produced. <laughs> Honest answer? every hour I was awake. And it still feels like a little bit like that now at times. Probably bad to say because there's this, there's definitely a culture around work-life balance and things like that, but I'd be lying if I said anything else. At the start, if I was awake, I was working. It, it's literally that simple. And even now, there's times where I will wake up on a Monday morning and before I know it, it's Friday afternoon. And all I've done is work and eat. And oftentimes, even if I'm eating, I'm sort of having to sort of work through that. And that's not to say that I don't believe in work-life balance because I absolutely do and I still try to protect my weekends as much as possible. Now in the early days, work straight through the weekend as well. Now I try and protect the weekends because I am married. I do want to spend time with Robin, the dogs, all that sort of stuff. And it's, it's healthy for me to do so. But particularly in the week, it's, it's, it's fairly non-stop. Well, definitely Mary and Robin for one. And I, I genuinely, this business and community that we've built, it's genuinely amazing. Like we employ, you know, over 900 people around the world. We've got offices around the world. I've seen people that have in achieved incredible things here. And by the way, people that have in achieved incredible things here and then gone on to do incredible things beyond Gymshark as well. And I think that's, that's something I'm very much proud of too. The other thing as well, um, being asked to be patron of Birmingham Women's and Children's Hospital was particularly important to me because I have been so I guess close to the NHS my entire life because of the job that my mum has done there, working as a nurse in the QE in Birmingham for pretty much my entire life, well, for my entire life, right? So to have that and to be able to give back in, 
in the way that I can is, is truly special to me. I do love memes. Memes. Archbishop of Banterbury, that's what makes me laugh. I'm just bait, things like that, honestly. I've, genuinely, this has been something I've had to, I've literally sat down and I thought to myself, if I'm gonna do the stuff that I wanna do in my life, I need to get the hell off these meme pages because there was a point, and this was going back about six months ago, I think we must have been in lockdown. I'd lose, I'd lose parts of my day to pages like Archbishop of Banterbury, I'm just bait, council, council estate lad, so funny, like so funny. And I'm that person as well, I'll send that to everyone. So I need to... <laughs> right, back, back. One sec, look at this one. I'm a mum of one and this Christmas day, I'm gonna get up at 4 a.m. and drink. I'll be smashed by 9 a.m., I don't care. Like, just like weird stuff like that, it makes me laugh. I'm in the, I mean, I feel like everyone's in the top 0.1% of something on Spotify though. So um, yeah, my top 0.1% is Cheryl Crow, which you probably didn't see coming. I love Land Rover Defenders. I love knives. I just love knives. Like, I, I don't know why, I just like knives. Uh, not like stabby or anything. That's suspicious. You'd be surprised by how much you use them people that lie like if there's any way for me to like see red if you lie it and again I really have to control myself and be really mindful of this but people that lie really 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 irritate me and I'm aware that people lie for all sorts of reasons right sometimes it's not like this vindictive thing it could just be they're subconsciously trying to protect themselves and their egos or whatever but that 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 definitely irritates me oh and the other one people that look down on others I, I think people that look down on others I think it's it's so it irritates the living daylights out of me Re genuinely really does there are people that look down on other people because they maybe don't have certain things or have done certain things and that for me is just ridiculous and stupid and arrogant beyond belief so that yeah irritates me and listen i've been in a room where there are people that are always looking for the most important in the room and like i would avoid those sorts of people like the plague that is a very different video to what we would normally do. It's just a little bit more relaxed and it, hopefully you've learned a few more things about me that I would never normally talk about in, in the content. Thank you so much for watching. I genuinely, genuinely appreciate it. Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. If there's anything else you wanna see in any future videos, then please comment down below. And before we finish, I have to reference the fact that I am not sat in Ikea. We recently built, we, we were in this uh, Studio X that we have at Gymshark and um, a lot of the sets that we use, we actually build, it's actually funnily enough, more cost effective to build a set in house rather than to move the teams that we have to different areas around the world. So we built this set for a launch that we have did uh, the other week. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to clarify, I'm not sat in an Ikea. We're in uh, Studio X um, and this was a set that we built for a, a campaign that we've just done.